our last video, we looked at the basic functions of the facing operation. Now in this video, we're going to continue working with the same part file to look at some of the more advanced aspects of the facing operation. If you didn't complete the last video, or currently don't have the part file open, you can open part 7.2 and save a copy of it in your working directory. With your part open, on the CAM Manager, right-click the facing operation and select Edit. We did already discuss the tooling, and again, if you want more information on feeds and speeds, you should refer to the documentation associated with these lessons. Let's start by looking at the Geometry tab. Remember, when no geometry was selected, by default, HSMWorks used the exterior geometry of our stock defined in the job. However, if you would like to define your own geometry, simply select Stock Contours. Then, within the graphics area, we can select the face or edges that are going to define our geometry. Along the lines of defining your geometry, if you used a solid body to define the stock, it can become frustrating to select edges that are within the stock geometry. One method of selecting an edge or face hidden within the stock is to right click and select Select Other. Now we can scroll through the options of edges close to the location where you selected Select Other. However, the easier method is to go ahead and hide the stock. If you've already started an operation, the simplest way of hiding the stock is to expand the feature tree, expand solid bodies, right click the body that's the stock, and select Hide Solid Body. Now, in the graphics area, we can easily select any edge that's within our stock geometry. You may have noticed, when I selected a second edge, the first edge was not automatically removed. So remember, if you just want one contour, you do need to remove the other contours from the contour box when selecting new contours. This can be done by selecting it and selecting Delete. Now, by default, the stock definition was actually most appropriate for this job, so I'm going to unselect stock contours to return to the default defined by our stock geometry. On the next tab, we can look at heights. Clearance, retract, and feed heights refer to where the tool is going to return to when it's moving between cuts. The thing that you're going to be changing more often when creating facing tool paths is the top definition and bottom definition. The top refers to the top face of your stock where the machining process needs to begin. And the bottom refers to how far down the machining process is going to go. Typically, with a facing operation, we're going to define the top as the top of the stock as this is the first operation in a job. In the case of the bottom, again, the default, which is top of the model, is the most appropriate option. We know we're going to machine down until we get to the top face on the model. Moving on to the Passes tab, we can begin controlling how the toolpath goes about removing the material. The step over is how far the tool is going to step over for each path along the part. By default, HSMWorks is going to set this step over to 90% of the width of the cutter. And if you change your tool, the step over will automatically update to be 90% of the new cutter diameter. The angle allows us to control what angle the toolpath is going to run at. Although a 45 degree angle is possible, you're best to run the toolpath parallel to the machine axes. Path extension extends the machining path beyond the machining boundary, while stock offset extends the machining boundary in both directions. Now, of all the options we can change with a facing toolpath, the one you're going to be using the most 
is the Multiple Depths option. When selected, we can define the maximum step down for each cut. We want to take a final skim pass of let's say 20 thousandths of an inch. With multiple depths and a finish pass set, let's go ahead and select OK and see what happens to our toolpath. We can now see that we've added multiple depth passes, ensuring that too much stock isn't removed in each pass. When defining how much of a depth cut to take in each path, I would refer to your manufacturer's data for the tooling. Well, with that said, I hope you now understand how to make any adjustments that are necessary with the facing toolpath. In the next video, we're going to begin looking at contouring toolpaths.